Hello there, dear viewers, and welcome to another bumper instalment of Newsdesk, the weekly gaming news roundup from the people of the sixthaxis.com. The top headline this week is the announcement of the Nintendo 2DS, something the company is calling a new member of the 3DS family. The 2DS, as you might expect, is a budget addition to the lineup that ditches the flagship 3D functionality, yet still plays all the DS and 3DS games already out and yet to be released. However, to cut costs, Nintendo has made the signifying two-screen layout from just one actual component, therefore having to ditch the pocketable clamshell design of the original DS and 3DS. Elsewhere, the controls have been moved slightly up and more in line with the top, non-touch screen, while the new design still includes the stereo camera setup on the rear, meaning users can still take 3D pictures if not view them. The company says that the new console is aimed at a younger audience, and specifically children younger than 7 that it warns against using the 3D mode on the 3DS. The 2DS will release alongside Pokemon X and Y on October 12th for just over £100. Alongside the 2DS announcement, Nintendo has also reduced the price of the Wii U by $50 in the United States. Don't go expecting to see many reductions in the UK though, as retailers have already been free to set their own prices for the console here since launch. Sony has used their indie showcase event at this week's Penny Arcade Expo in Seattle to announce another slate of upcoming downloadable titles for the PS3, PS4 and Vita. Z-Boy's retro-styled RPG Cosmic Star Heroine is now coming to PS4 and Vita as well as PC, as is Road Not Taken, which is a new puzzle roguelike game as described by developers Spry Fox, who are most well known for mobile game Triple Town. Upcoming PC brawler Samurai Gun is also coming to PS4 and Vita, while Terry Kavanagh's VVVVVV is coming to Vita, and Capcom is publishing PC platformer Dust Force on Vita, PS3 and 360. Also announced is PlayStation Move support in Octodad Dadliest Catch, making it the first announced PS4 game confirmed as Move compatible, while Double Fine is working on additional content for pre-installed PS4 camera game The Playroom. Also revealed is a new third-party production unit at Sony dedicated to bringing loved IPs to new places, starting with Iron Galaxy's Vita port of Borderlands 2. Speaking of Borderlands 2, a Game of the Year edition including the first season of downloadable content has been confirmed for PS3, 360 and PC, with a similar edition also on the way for Halo 4. Telltale's episodic adaptation of The Walking Dead is coming to Android console Ouya, Throwback Free Roma Retro City Rampage is coming to 3DS and Crytek's free-to-play shooter Warface is on the way to Xbox 360, while Rovio has teased a new Angry Birds themed kart racer called Go. The gaming-focused Android tablet The Wikipad is confirmed to arrive in the UK for £250. Psyonix has reconfirmed development on the sequel to mental 2008 downloadable PS3 title Supersonic Acrobatic Rocket Powered Battle Cars which will arrive first on PC in free alpha form at some point in the future. And the first major post-release pack has been announced for Jewels of the Planeswalkers 2014, which is due to arrive on September 18th. In the news this week, Microsoft has introduced long-discussed changes to Xbox Live that switched the service from the previous Microsoft points-based system to one that uses local currency, with points already added to Xbox Live converting on the first attempted purchase and the resulting balance valid for a year. In addition, the company has rebranded the Xbox Live Marketplace to bring it in line with their other stores for music and video. The service is now known as the Xbox Games Store in the UK, or just Xbox Games in the US. The new online RPG in the Final Fantasy series, Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn, launched this Tuesday and has been plagued with issues since. The game, of which this launch signifies a second attempt following a poorly received version originally available in September 2010, ran an early access event last weekend open to pre-order customers, but many were unable to log in or create their own characters. Tuesday's official opening experienced similar issues as well as problems for those downloading the game from the European PlayStation Store whose copies of the game would seemingly not authorise against Square Enix's servers. Following an apology from game director Naoki Yoshida, the company halted digital sales of the game on Wednesday in an attempt to ease server congestion. The issues follow similar but less severe problems that affected the launch of Guild Wars 2 back in August 2012. In other news, Nintendo has confirmed that it will finally be releasing the Wii U and 3DS versions of Scribblenauts Unlimited in Europe in December. While American publisher Warner Brothers released the game back in November last year, it was first put back to this February before a last minute delay saw the game release only on PC, with the Nintendo published versions missing in action. Bizarrely, the delay will mean Unlimited will launch in Europe after DC Comics-infused sequel Scribblenauts Unmasked does so in America. 
Unmasked is due in the States in September, but a European release has yet to be confirmed. UK retailer Game has confirmed that it is now completely out of the special Day 1 editions of the Xbox One, and is no longer guaranteeing new pre-orders for launch day delivery. Meanwhile, Microsoft has confirmed the contents of the Day 1 branded limited editions of Forza 5, Dead Rising 3, and Rise Son of Rome. Forza 5's edition will include three cars and Day 1 style deliveries, while Dead Rising 3 will come with costumes for the playable characters from the first two games, as well as the zombie slugger and paddle saw weapons, and Rise will come with a special sword for the online gladiator mode, as well as an exclusive multiplayer map. All the Day 1 branded games will be available to those who pre-order, as well as those who download from the Xbox Game Store in the first two weeks. Sony's worldwide studio head Shuhai Yoshida has described a Vita version of Gran Turismo 6 as unlikely, with the exec noting that there are no clear plans right now for Gran Turismo on the portable. Bethesda's Pete Hines has confirmed that the publisher is in talks with Microsoft to see if the company will allow players of The Elder Scrolls Online to skirt around the mandatory fee for Xbox Live, given that the game already requires an $8.99 a month subscription. But he notes that for now, having to pay both those fees is just the way it works, but that the team will continue to push on the issue. Deep Silver have clarified comments made at Gamescom last week about plans to make the Metro franchise more accessible in the future. Writing on the series' blog, the company noted that a new game would build on the series' trademark bleak post-apocalyptic pillars of atmosphere, immersion, challenge and depth, and instead try to appeal to a wider audience with better marketing and a launch on more platforms. Sony Online Entertainment have announced a streamlining of the company and layoffs at both their Austin and San Diego offices. In an internal email, SOE CEO John Smedley said that the process was horrible and sickening, but necessary in order to bring the company's outgoings in line with its revenue. While some were let go from the Planet Side 2 team, Smedley noted that the team working on the just-announced EverQuest Next are not affected. Developers of this year's Need for Speed Rivals, the new EA studio Ghost, have revealed that they are to be the new home of the series, and that while Criterion, who were last year reported to be the new home base for the franchise, are assisting on this year's title, the series will not be switching annually between the two studios, as has been the setup in the past. Microsoft has revealed a rewards program for the Forza Motorsport franchise that will allow players to earn points by playing series entries as far back as Forza 2, with accrued points redeemable for cars, credits and other content in Forza 4, 5 and Horizon while Ubisoft has delayed the PlayStation Vita version of Rayman Legends at the last minute. The portable version will now release on September 13th in Europe and the UK. Sony has revealed that no new content will be added to Virtual World Service PlayStation Home in Japan from this September, with other Asian territories following in March 2014. While the press release announcing the plans noted that the European and US versions of the service would be unaffected, and there is no word of server shutdowns across any territories, it raises concerns about the continued running of a world in which some have invested a significant amount. Finally, a couple of bits of PS4 news. A bundle including the console, two controllers, the camera and a copy of Killzone Shadowfall has surfaced on Amazon France, with a €499 Euro price point. While Sony has not yet confirmed the bundle for the UK, the price puts it level with the Xbox One, which comes with the next-gen Kinect, one controller and a copy of FIFA 14 for those who pre-order. On the topic of Amazon, the retailer has noted in its product description for the PS4 camera that it will be capable of some form of navigational voice commands similar to Kinect. Meanwhile, Microsoft have confirmed that such commands will only be operable in five countries at Xbox One launch, the UK, US, Canada, France and Germany. Back to Sony, and a leaked slide from the company's presentation at the GameStop Expo in Las Vegas last weekend has listed 21 third parties currently working on exclusive games or content for the PlayStation. The list includes known entities like Ubisoft, who are adding PS3 and PS4 exclusive content to Assassin's Creed 4 and Watch Dogs, and Warner Brothers, who have exclusive content in the PS3 version of Batman Arkham Origins. But the list also includes mysterious entries such as Disney, Sega and Rockstar Games. Lastly, an interview with SCE Europe head Jim Ryan has shed some light on the Gaikai service that went unmentioned at Gamescom recently. The plan is apparently still to launch in early-ish 2014 in North America, streaming PS3 content to PS4, then Vita, then PS3, while a European release is still an unknown due to issues with broadband speeds in the territory, with partnerships designed to improve the situation already highlighted during the company's Gamescom conference. Chart time and it's a new entry at number one with Saints Row 4 sweeping into the top spot, selling a million copies in its first week worldwide. 
Also new is Splinter Cell Blacklist at number 2 and Disney Infinity at number 3. Minecraft Xbox 360 Edition is down 2 places to 4, with Call of Duty Black Ops 2 also down 2 to number 5. Last week's number 1, Payday 2, has dropped to number 18, while new release The Bureau, XCOM Declassified, only managed number 10, with new Wii U exclusive The Wonderful 101 not even managing a top 20 spot, instead arriving at number 22. Just the usual couple of bits to wrap up then. This month's plus content, including Assassin's Creed 3 and Stealth Inc., is now live on the PSN, while Rainbow Six Vegas and Magic 2013 are confirmed as this month's free games on Xbox Live Gold. A new firmware update is available for the PlayStation Vita offering just stability improvements, while an Assassin's Creed franchise sale is now running on the European PlayStation Store. A new patch is out for The Last of Us, adding a new multiplayer mode called Interrogation, and those looking forward to GTA Online can now start assembling their crews on Rockstar's Social Club. Head over now to SixthAxis.com to see the launch trailer for GTA V, the first footage from Arkham Origins' portable cousin Blackgate, to sign up for the Dead Island Epidemic beta, and to read the first plot hints for the Xbox One version of Halo. While there's also a review of Rayman Legends and a bunch of previews for the biggest upcoming games including Call of Duty Ghosts, Battlefield 4, Titanfall, FIFA 14 on Next Gen, and even a special feature on The Order 1886. Get following us on Facebook and Twitter for all the latest headlines direct to you, and we'll be back next week with more Newsdesk. Thanks for watching.